Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster here, about 10.49 p.m. here in California, August 17th, 2024. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 2.2 into Hawaii, underneath Hawaii there, around the Kilauea Volcano. Let's go ahead and check out, see what's going on here. Of course, we did have that big earthquake out around the uh, Kamchatka area earlier today. Going to be a 7.0. Uh, that stirred up a volcano shortly thereafter. Uh, one of the volcanoes out here went into eruption stage. Uh, originally, that earthquake coming in as a 7.4 triggered a local tsunami threat. Uh, I don't believe we've seen any tsunami uh, produced from that uh, earthquake. Maybe a little minor fluctuations there in the tide, but uh, overall... Uh, no Pacific wide tsunami. This occurred about 18 miles deep into the northern edge here of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Of course, this area very capable of producing a 9.0 earthquake. We've seen it back in 1952. And uh, a little bit of time has passed since then. So, as always, want to keep an eye on these aftershock sequences following any big quake like this. Uh, so far, we got two 5.1s and a couple 4s in there as well. I'm sure there may be uh, a little bit of smaller activity as well, but uh, really not seeing too much there on the globe. Maybe another 4 in there, a couple more 4s from the EMSC showing that aftershock sequence here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that area, um, maybe for some larger movement. It's been a while since we've seen any major large-scale activity. So a 7-pointer is actually a very minimum earthquake uh, that can take place here across this major subduction zone, which is, uh, again, very capable of producing a 9.0. So what's happened since then? Well, far as uh, the larger magnitudes go out here, um, let's see, we've got a little bit of newer activity across the Izu Trench here, 4.8. And, uh, of course, movement up and down the area, right, around Japan recently. Uh, it's probably putting a strain on uh, some subduction zones out here. Of course, around the uh, this little subduction zone where the Japanese folks there uh, put out that mega quake warning here a few days back. Following the activity over here on the western side of that subduction zone. It's been over a week now. I can't believe that. Uh, this area right here. They put out a uh, warning here for a mega quake potential across this region. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that area, obviously. Uh, if they're uh, putting out a little warning like that, that's uh, interesting. Couple fives as well, Fiji Islands and the uh, uh, looks like Indonesia Islands area seeing some adjustment following that big movement up north. Uh, far as the west coast goes, see if we got anything stirring up out here. A lot of had a couple of questions there asking me if this has relieved the California pressure out here. Most of the time, it needs to be the big quakes. Um, that uh, relieves some of the strain out here in California. Just like we've seen in 2011, that big nine-pointer off the coast there of Japan that triggered that tsunami. Uh, there's a couple articles put out that uh, that big earthquake shifted the land so much over here, it relieved stress out against the west coast. But I don't know about these seven-pointers. I don't know if that's going to relieve anything out here or not. As far as earthquake activity, even generally be, uh, before the seven-pointer struck there in the uh, uh, Russia area, uh, things were a little on the quiet side, and they remain um, fairly quiet far as 2.5 and above goes. We do have a handful of smaller quakes out here, microquake activity, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault with a 1.6 uh, here in the last hour, and a couple other smaller quakes. Really no intense swarming, just uh, our areas that have seen recent earthquake activity uh, with a couple smaller microquakes in each location out here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it. I don't think we completely uh, relieved the strain out here. Uh, Washington, not a whole lot going on up there for now. Let me uh, see what we got here for the trimmer department. Cascadia trimmer, that is. Wow, that's a pretty decent uptick here. 715 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, towards the northern end, of course, the northern end will extend up here past the uh, Vancouver Island Range to about the Queen Charlotte Sound area. Um, that's a lot, 715. That's getting up there. In fact, that's probably our highest level that we've seen for a one-day tally since, uh, well, I don't know how many is that. That's 294. Probably back in the end of uh, 2022 when we last seen our big number. 
even uh, earlier this year uh, and last month, I think in July, we've seen a decent amount of trimmer, but uh, today's count is up there. That's 715. So that tells me right there that the, um, the plates here are gaining some steam. Obviously, the trimmer activity occurs down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. And uh, that's got to be adding a little bit of steam up or a little bit of strain up here across the area. S uh, minimal amount here in Northern California and Southern Oregon. But still a little bit there showing up. So we'll continue to keep an eye on the Cascadia. Uh, not much in terms of earthquake activity up there for now. Uh, further out, let me check out the Yellowstone here real quick. We'll go over here. And uh, that is not a localized earthquake here. I think everyone knows what that is. That is the seven pointer there on the Curl Kamchatka Trench. Look at that. Beautiful P wave showing up along with surface waves following that earthquake. Uh, it's a beautiful quake. In terms of the signature right here, I do like to observe uh, what these earthquakes do uh, to a seismograph station thousands of miles away. It's interesting to see that. And it showed up across numerous seismograph stations here in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. So, uh, yeah, crazy. But far as earthquake activity goes, not a whole lot in terms of local seismic activity. There's Yellowstone is uh, sleeping and probably in a, a, a long sleep, hopefully. Uh, let's see, a little bit of adjustment going on here across the Chile Rise area, southeast of Easter Island. This is a uh, little fracture zone out here. Uh, Valdivia fracture zone out in the uh, e southeastern Pacific here. Uh, aside from that, let me see what else we have on the globe. New Zealand got a couple threes stirring up down there. 4.8 is the latest quake just coming in right now. Um, that potentially could stir things up here across the South America area. So we'll have to keep an eye there on the Peru Chile Trench. It's been quite active actually from about the Peru area southward with a bunch of fours out there. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, not much going on there. Uh, Mediterranean area, this is all older quake activity. Uh, looks like things have really calmed down here in this area following um, following the event out there in Russia. Not a whole lot of newer activity out here uh, for now. Let's see what we got up in Iceland real quick. And then we'll check out space weather activity. Uh, let's see here. So last 12 hours, about 143 earthquakes here in various locations of Iceland across the rift boundaries here. Uh, when I include all these little small microquakes here, uh, showing the area of concern, um, and that includes underneath Grindavik, this area is quite pressurized here in terms of the volume of magma that has been accumulating underneath this area since the last eruption. Let's uh, bring up the run times here. I want to see what we got for the Grindavik area in terms of GPS measurements here. Vertical displacement. That's going to be, uh, let's see here, right here. This is going to be the uh, Grindavik station here. There's our last eruption back in the uh, May time period of this year. Lost a lot of volume. Now we've been steadily going up. In fact, we're well above the previous level seen. So this is going to be interesting here to see how much longer we're going to be able to accumulate magma below the surface. I noticed a little bit of leveling off here in the last couple of days. So we may be at a point where things are just about ready to pop, so to speak, there uh, in the uh, Iceland area. Hopefully it stays away from Grindavik, but still there's always a little concern there that it could be within or just outside that location. Um, let me check Hawaii here real quick because I kind of jumped over it out there in the middle of the Pacific. Still got a little bit of activity from the summit off to the uh, Middle East Rift Zone here. Let's see what we got. This activity fairly shallow and it is kind of stretching up towards the summit region. Still always a possibility here we could see an eruption up here across this region of the Lava Lake area. Uh, so let me pop this back up here. I don't really care about the news right now. Too chaotic. So we'll go over here to the USGS program and check out uh, 
the USGS uh, volcano here. And the reason why I go over here to Hawaii or uh, to the uh, Edge browser is because for some reason it just doesn't want to work here on. I'm trying to get rid of all of these. Don't need that many up. Uh, it doesn't work appropriately on Chrome for some reason. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But goodness, I just I think what I need to do is <laughs> just bookmark the Kilauea Volcano site here, right? That way I don't have to go through all of this. That's a brilliant idea. Like right here, right? So let me take this here real quick and we'll, we'll do it before I forget. Ta-da! There we go. So the volcano is still sitting at a yellow and advisory earthquake activity leading up to the summit. Past 12 hours here. A uh, little increasing earthquake activity event here this afternoon, Hawaii time. Uh, since then, things have died off a little bit, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see this thing um, maybe shoot off here to the lower east rift zone or maybe just continue to build around the summit area. It's, it's hard to tell what's going on at the moment uh, and where we're going to see our next eruption here. Fairly steady across the tilt board in this location. The overall deformation data shows a, uh, wow, shows a pretty steep uh, up climb here, up climb, uh, indicating inflation. So higher level inflation rapidly increasing. There's our magma displacement event back in the end of July. The summit was quite pressurized. That got displaced to the upper east rift zone. And now we're coming way back up here uh, to the summit area in terms of inflation. And it looks like we're just above that previous level. So similar to Iceland, we're at a, uh, a breaking point here continue to keep an eye on that report back on any major major changes uh let's see here so space weather activity on this saturday night a little bit of flaring kicking off here some sea flare c3.5 coming in right now from let's see where this is popping off from uh looks like maybe this area right here there's a little bit of brightness showing up could even be this region but nothing big minimal flaring activity right now uh, I mean we do have quite a few sunspots that are currently uh, capable of producing some flares uh, stronger than sea flare activity but uh, they're not wanting to do it they're not wanting to put on a show this massive region here will be drifting further and further out on the western limb here in the coming days so that will be out of sight out of mind still a decent flare threat from that area and uh, we have a couple different regions coming around the eastern limb that will watch Mainly right here, this area looks like a, uh, a decent region for some flare activity. But uh, also within this area, it looks like a little bit of close proximity of the magnetic structure. As uh, far as any auroras go, uh, let's see here. This was uh, this morning when we seen the KP index up around the 7 or so at a G3 class storm. That has since died down a little bit, uh, but the conditions were not favorable for uh, aurora activity. We had the BZ component there pointing north, tilted north, uh, and that suppressed the auroras out here. So even if, even though we had the uh, you know the KP index way up there, uh, things were just being suppressed. So um, it doesn't look like things are going to play out in terms of any significant auroras tonight looks uh, fairly calm a detailed forecast out here did show uh yeah this is tonight looks like they revised it here a little bit um, but uh, yeah i don't i'm really not expecting much there in terms of the roars flare threat 20 percent chance for x flare c flare 99 percent and m flare around 70 percent chance or so and uh, we'll just see what happens here over the next couple nights potentially might be elevated but depends on a number of factors out there they all have to go in line with one another to get the auroras being uh, amplified out there all right uh what else we got uh, do, do, do. let's check out uh hurricane activity anything major going on out here pacific wise there's a couple different potentials uh all away from land currently so really no concern uh, we do have Ernesto out there 
that uh, it's past the Bermuda area now. Looks like maximum sustained winds of about 70 miles per hour, uh, which puts it at a... Uh, Uh, that would put it at a um, tropical storm. Yeah, excuse me, tropical storm, Ernesto. I was going to say there, that should be not a hurricane, tropical storm. Moving off to the northeast here at about 8 miles per hour. It is expected to intensify a little bit back to the hurricane status before tracking away to the north and northeast, a ways away from land up here. So, um, yeah, see you later there, Ernesto. After that... Um, I don't really see anything out there in development stage in terms of any suspicious tropical development for now. Uh, man, got a lot of thunderstorm activity up there in Washington and Oregon today. I think they're still having it. Let me check out the uh, windy map. Got a little bit of activity around Redding today, uh, just north of me, but eh. either way, the cooler weather is coming in. Look at all this activity goodness they're getting a lot of lightning up here seattle seeing a lot this is all pushing to the north uh just a massive amount of thunderstorm activity up there in washington which it happens on occasion but not all that often uh, so those guys getting quite a soaking going on there hopefully it puts out any fires and doesn't start any new fires out there uh, let's check out the fire map here see what we got for uh latest activity here park fire uh, is what are we at here we are at 429,000 acres 50% containment that is the fire perimeter burned a whole bunch of land and a whole bunch of houses out here uh, looks like the main area of concern I don't see any hot spots out there that's good news but uh, looks like main, mainly a couple areas still burning within the perimeter here but uh, they're getting a handle on it 50% containment there uh, Boise fire up there looks like it's still burning. 11,000 acres, 7% containment. Uh, let's see what we got. A bunch of fires up in Oregon. Hopefully that uh, thunderstorm activity contributed to putting some of the fires out as far as the rainfall goes. There was a lot of rain with the storm, so that's good. Washington's got a couple fires up there as well. And, uh, well, I mean, we, we still got a couple months here before we get our rainy season down here in northern california doesn't really start up until about november so we got september october a couple more months of some heavy fire potential out here in the west coast so hopefully hopefully nothing starts up just uh got to be uh, vigilant about uh, any fire hazards out here not really much left to burn out here in northern california but there is some areas so all right I think that's about it, folks. Uh, seismograph stations here show uh, not a whole lot of activity right now. So we'll continue to keep an eye on things. Of course, that was a pretty big quake out there today in the uh, Russia area. We'll continue to watch that, uh, see if any further development pops off. There's a couple of smaller earthquakes here in the Gulf of Alaska uh, there in the last hour, but really nothing of any major concern. A couple threes popping up here at the northern end of the Pacific Plate. Of course, got to remember when things adjust here, uh, other areas will adjust accordingly. So, and uh, we'll just, we'll check it out, see what it looks like in the morning and report back then. Enjoy your Saturday evening. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there.